Julia, your friends just shot by to give you your paper. Thanks. Hey, you want to play a video game with me? No, I have to go do the final exam. Ugh, why must you always have so much homework? I just want to play with you. I can't. I have work. Why are you doing this? No. You like this crazy yeah, stuff? Yeah, I don't care. Oh I like it. Oh it's by itself. You oh just got to accept it. Wait, wait, wait. What's happening? What? 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 Ah! This place looks like my video game. What's that supposed to mean? Welcome to the uh, quest of seven units. What is that? Yeah, I'm not following. Your quest is to complete the missions given in all seven units. Each unit is a level. Pass all levels and you can go home. Oh no, we have no idea what the seven units are. How are we supposed to do this? Can you tell us what the seven units are? Yes, there are you. Universals of culture, ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, economics, government types, prehistory, and geography. Wait a second, we learned all these in school. I know these topics. Then what are we waiting for? The first level's name that UOC. What's a UOC? It's a universal of culture. It's nine categories that almost anything can be categorized into. So what about the game controller? Well, it could go into material culture because it's a phys physical object. Arts play and recreation because it's used for entertainment. And it's, it's something you play with in your free time for fun. See? It will be easy. Just name all the possible universals for the things shown. Sign language. Language and nonverbal communication. Explain why. It's a form of communication. Each sign means something in that language. A person combines more than one symbol to talk to other people. Correct. Parents. Economic organization, social control, social organization, conflict and warfare, and education. Economic organization because parents are the ones with the money, so they buy all the material culture. They also distribute it to the family. Social control because parents make rules for their children for them to be normal, good, and correct. Education because parents teach us how to live, what's bad, and what's good. Social organization because there are different types of parents, and different parents raise different groups of children. Conflict and warfare, because parents help kids solve their problems in an accepted way. So, if you and me were fighting over a cookie, Mom, Mom would resolve our problem by just splitting it in half, instead of you and me fighting over it. Yeah, or she would just eat it herself. Yes! Once again, correct! Last one! Religion. Worldview. Religion is what people believe in. It can explain things in life. It also creates an overall goal to reach. Nice job! Level 1 complete! How did you know that? You're still in 5th grade. I used a common sense card. Oh, is that a video game feature? Yes. Level 2. Survive that. Geography. Survive that is where you put into a geographic feature and you have to find the best way to survive it. Yay, this will be fun. I don't know. Some of these might be tricky. How would you live in a body of water? You could live in a boat and eat fish for your entire life. That would be boring, but survival is survival. Well, at least you got golf. It's bigger. Okay, we have a good amount of land to grow crops over here. Also, plenty of water to drink. Is that how we live here? Yes, correct! Is Miss N Channel. Yes, I have the channel. A wide range of land to grow food. And because it's closed off, I can see approaching enemies. Uh, I'm guessing I have the Ismas. Well, I have plenty of water, though my land is kind of small. Imagine getting cornered in that by enemies. Hope you can swim good. Correct! And yes, that Ismus might be a safety hazard. Archipelago and Peninsula. Hey, look at that! This is the landform Korea is. Also, I'm surrounded by water, so I can grow crops wherever I want. Then Trey can be good because I have some land over there. Well, I'm good on water. If one island gets attacked or runs out of resources, I can have plenty of others to spare. Good! Two more to go! Plains and Plateau. Well, I can see enemies clearly, though if I ever have to get more resources from below, the trip will be quite difficult. Blades of grass, as far as the eye can see, at least I'll be good on food. Bread for days. Just mix water and the greens from grass, then cook it and you will have rock. That's right! In the prehistoric era, bread tastes more like rock. Even so, you're still correct! Delta and straight. Yes, I got the delta! Okay, near perfect farmland and really, really good water source. What makes the farmland so good? As the water flows down the river, it starts to slow down. This causes the dirt to settle, and over time, the dirt will keep layering over itself. 
As this happens, new land will be created. Correct! Well, I have a good trade route with the strait because the water flows in from the ocean out of the lake. I can receive resources from over there, then send resources to them. Common sense card used. Absolutely! Next level! Economics. In this level, you have to successfully sell a cow and give it economic state. Traditional economic system. Here you go. What does that mean? It means that we got really lucky what job our parents got. If we're trying to sell a cow, a traditional economic system means that your job is chosen by what your parents had. This man was a farmer with livestock and crops, so now we are farmers. Oh, now we just take a cow and sell it. It's not as easy as you think. For look how many cows he had. I only see two, and it's a baby. Looks like the looked like that one's too young to be sold. Which means the mom can't be sold either. Man, scarcity sucks. What's scarcity? It means when there's not enough of one or more resources. In this case, cows. Though we could check if he was in a guild. Ooh, what's that? A guild is a group of people who share the same job or hobbies. So, how would this help us? A guild is also helpful for trading. Think about it. If this man was in a farm guild, then someone else has the chance of having some extra cows. You're right! He's in a guild! It says so on this paper. Let's go! Cattle for sale! Come get your cattle! Over there! Excuse me, sir. Would you like to trade some crops for one cow? Yes, sir. One cow coming up! Now go over there to that stand and sell that cow! Ten minutes later. Howdy, I'd like to buy that cow of yours. Sold. Yeah, you did it! Man, we were so lucky that place wasn't ruled by communism. Why? If it was, the government that would have owned the farm we traded from might not have let us make the trade. In that economic state, the government owns and runs almost all businesses. We could have been searching for hours. Yeah, you got lucky on that one. Market economic system. Okay, where is our farm? Remember, we're in a market economic system. In this one, we get to choose what we do as a job. Oh, then how do we get a job? There's your answer! Let's go. Sometime later. Alright, you guys are going to take this cow and sell it at the market festival. Okay. Do we need to check with anyone before we go sell something at a festival? Nope. I own this farm all by myself. Good question, though. I hear some of my friends who also work in the farm businesses. Their companies are owned by the government. That, my good sister, is what you call socialism. Correct! Socialism is similar to communism, but the major difference is that the government only owns most of the stores in the other companies. They allow people, like that farmer, to have their own business. After a long truck ride. Is that cow for sale? Yes. Would you like to buy it? Yes. One more! Command economic system. Ooh, this should be interesting. Why? Well, a command economic system is where the government chooses your job. That sounds controlling. In some sense, yes, but once again, look straight inside you. For this kingdom is ruled by a capitalism. Kingdom? Capitalism? Yes, and yes. I decided to spice this one up a bit because your job is chosen by the government. The king in this case is the government. Yo, the king is in the house. I has an announcement. We have some new people in the shizzle. Here are your swag jobs, ladies and gentlemen cars. That hair, though. He looks like Bob Ross. Here are your jobs. You guys are the swag cow sellers. Let's go start a business and sell that cow. After somehow getting a business and acquiring a cow. I forgot to ask, what's capitalism? It's where people can start their own companies or businesses. Is that why we were able to just start a swag cow selling business? Yes. By order of the king, your swag cow selling business will be moved to new land. It's owned by a lord. What land? Feudalism is where the king gives a noble a piece of land to own as his own. So the king makes a new king? No, the noble has to tax everyone for the king, and help him in war. He can make his own armies and whatever taxes he wants, though. So, before you leave, I will buy that cow for my new and improved farm. Sold! Only four more levels to go! Government. Let's take a break from going places. My feet kind of hurt. Okay, then what do we do? How about a game? Inside a video game? Yeah. Oranges to oranges? Don't question it. Here's how you play. First, one player will choose an orange card. Then, the other player will have to take seven green cards. The orange card is the topic, and you guys have to choose a green card that best fits the orange card. Okay. okay. Anarchy. 
Wait, this is a form of government. I said we were playing a game. I never said what the topic of the game was. I don't know what anarchy means. Change your best guess. Be smart. Okay, first one. A lack of government and no government. We both win. How? Anarchy means no government, or the lack of it. So we both win. So how will we split the card? Oh. Tyranny. Okay, we have a government where one person has all power, then we have North Korea. I feel like this game is rigged. What on earth are you talking about? We just so happen to have a definition of tyranny and a great example of it. Is it because North Korea has one ruler and all power goes to him? Yes. Monarchy. Let's see what we've got. A person that has supreme power and a king. Why'd you pick king, Maria? Because all the power goes to one person, like a king. Isn't that the exact same thing as tyranny? Yes and no. Tyranny is usually ruled by fear. That's why North Korea is such a great example. There's another big thing that separates the two. When a king dies in monarchy, instead of just going to some random person, it goes to the sun. Oh, and this keeps the power in one family. Correct. The people right below the king, like his family, they're all part of the aristocracy. The class of privileged nobles. Theocracy. A government ruled by religion and... Wait, how can you be ruled by a religion? Simple, you have a religious person, kind of like a priest. They would rule the people, but everyone would follow the religion. If someone were to rebel against the religion, they would be kicked out or executed. So, everyone follows the religion, but the priest is at the face of it. Yes! Democracy. This is the last round. Let's make it a good one. Okay, for the last round, for the tiebreaker. A government ruled by all of its members and a group of people that were voted to be in the government. Yes, I win. How? You gave the definition for republic. A democracy is where everyone runs the government. A republic is when people vote for other people to be in the government. Oh. Good game. Next level. Mesopotamia. Okay, what do we do now? Where's the guide? I don't know, but he left us directions and a map. Wait, this looks like the Tigris and Euphrates River. Then this would be the Fertile Crescent. Tigris and Euphrates? Fertile Crescent? They're the two rivers that run into the Persian Gulf. These rivers are very good water source. Everyone was always fighting over that piece of land because of its great resources. The Fertile Crescent is the land that covers the Middle East. The reason they call it a crescent is because it surrounds Mesopotamia, well, like a crescent. What's inside the Fertile Crescent? Fertile land. Fertile means good farmland. That's how civilizations were able to grow crops. What do we do? He left us some instructions. Instructions. You are in 559 BC, and you need to find the Persian Empire. What's an empire? A huge amount of land that is ruled by one authority. Instructions. Go to the Babylonian city-state, then go to the priestess king. Hold the phone. English? A city-state is a city that relies on their own resources and land. A priest-king is a person that will rule for, with permission from religious authority, the king when he is absent, or dead. Instructions. After you find him, you will need to use the bronze and make a tribute for your protection. Now go to the ziggurat and get a... Uniform! Then you will have to find a scribe and make a copy of the mud tablet. What? I'll explain later. Let's go. Sometime later. Okay, we're going to the priest king. Who's there? Uh, we would like to make a mud tablet. We have bronze. You have until sundown. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Okay, take a mud cuneiform. Whoa, what's on this thing? That thing is mud. It's covered in pictographs. They represent objects or people. Take fish, for example. The people would draw to communicate what they saw. Over time, the pictures evolved into symbols for writing. So a cuneiform is this tablet. Yes, and now we're going to scribe to get a copy of it. A scribe, you say? Yes, that is my job. I can copy the tablet for some bronze. Yes, please. What are those? They are big pillars with pictographs on them. This symbolize rules from the king. Think about it. If you see these big pillars made by the king, you probably wouldn't want to mess with him. It's a show him who's boss kind of thing. What happens if you break the rules? Well, they could trade you off for resources, or put you in slavery, or they would probably just execute you. Wow, that's cold. Yes, wow indeed, but cold was normal for them. One of the methods I've heard is that they would throw you in a lake. If you drown, you're innocent. If you swim, then you are guilty. Either way, you die! Exactly. Well, it's almost sundown. Let's get out of here.
Sure. I don't feel like drowning today. Hey, guys! Sup, wait. Where did you go? Uh, code jumping. Mm-hmm. I went to go fix some mistakes to the code. I have to slow down the black hole that keeps you here. You only have two more levels. Well, that's great and all, but what did we need this mud tablet for? You'll need something to tie a warp back in here. What? I'll explain when you get there. Let's get you guys to the next level. Egypt. For this one, there's only one quest. Grab some gold from the top of the pyramid. You will start from the delta of the Nile River and continue all the way down. Won't anyone notice that their gold is being stolen? Not if you find a way to distract them. Look, I know we've been lucky in the past, but they will notice us trespassing. Not if we dress like them. Look down. Cool. Let's go. What are these clothes made out of? Linen, which is fabrics from the fax plant. Cool. So, uh, ah, well, that's shiny. What is that? It's a pyramid. In ancient times, they would build them out of marble and place gold on top. Over time, dust has covered it to look to what it looks like today. Oh, okay. Wait, is that the Nile River? 4,160 miles long, and yes it is. The Nile provides Egypt everything it has. It's actually made of three rivers, the Nile, the Ethiopia, and the Kenya. People can send resources for building or trade using boats. Only problem is, is the trade source can only go one way, because the river only goes one way. The Nile floods for four months at the same time of every year, from heavy rains from Ethiopia. This creates good crops for the black land. That land doesn't look black to me. It's not black black. They just call it black land because it's darker than red land. Red land is the land that's just desert. And the black land is the land that is fertile and close to the river. With all this good farmland, who rules it? The pharaoh. He is a god on earth for Egypt. He controls the Nile and rules it in theocracy. The weather here is always hot, yet there is a cooler season. But it's still hot. Is that why the houses are painted white? To reflect the sun? Yes, just like that one. Innovation was a key part to ancient Egypt. They made their technology good so that they had a lot of resources. This led to a bigger population. Well, because they had more people, didn't they all do farm work? No. People started becoming artists, making pottery, mats, etc. Many of the higher jobs, such as rulers and priests, they followed rituals and took care of the temples. What about the people who didn't do as well? If you owed debt, you became a slave. You worked in the mines, and the chances of dying was very high. Sometimes they would free you, but it was very rare. Did they let kids have childhood? For a little bit, yes. You would just play with dolls or play sports, then marry in your early teens. Hey, what's this writing? It's called Hieroglyphics, which dates back to 3000 BC and contains 700 to 6000 symbols. That sign is called Ankh. It means eternal life. So it's part of religion? Yes. Egyptians believed life after death. This is called the afterlife, which was believed to be happy. Their religion was polytheism, which means the belief of many gods. Speaking of afterlife, what's mummification? Ooh, glad you brought that up. Mummification is preserving a body after death so it can be in the afterlife. Heh, <laughs> got a strong stomach? Yeah. They were to move all of the gooey parts, except the heart and shove a metal rod up your nose to remove your brain, wrap you in lining strips, then place you in a stone coffin called a sarcophagus. Then, they place you in a tomb which is located beneath the ground. This process took about 70 days. Whoa, that's really disgusting, but kind of cool. Ah! Did you hear that? It's runaway lamb. No, that's the guy dressed up as a lamb. I think that's our cue to run to the pyramid. Let's go! Whew, that could have been a lot harder. Hey, since we're here, you want to learn about archaeology? Sure. Archaeology is the study of past human life. They base their research on real evidence. Speaking of that, when some artifact is taken from a home co from its home country and returned back, it's called a repertoire. Ooh, artifacts, like the Rosetta Stone. Yeah, that's an important key to thing to decoding hieroglyphics. Okay, we're at the top. Let's take the golden go. This is the last level. Once you complete this, you will be teleported to the black hole that keeps you here. The next level is Paleolithic and Neolithic time period. Acquire a bow and one arrow. Then use your last common sense card for further instructions. I hope we meet again in the future. 
But if we don't, goodbye and good luck. Prehistory. So how are we getting? How are we gonna make a bow and arrow? Well, we're gonna have to make it on our own. What's Paleolithic even mean? Paleo means old, and lithic means stone. It's also the first part of the Stone Age. Note that this is what we call them. They wouldn't call themselves Paleolithic people. So we're dealing with the dumb cavemen. Not at all. In fact, these people were extremely intelligent. You remember when we would try to make stuff out of sticks for fun? Well, these people had to do it every single day for survival. They, everything had to come from nature. Oh, so how old are they? They're about 2.5 million years old. Holy cow. If that was so long ago, how do we even know they exist? We have evidence. They use stone tools. Stone doesn't decay. We also have cave drawings with pictographs. Also, there are pi fire pits. We can see where they've been. Do bones and skeletons show up too? Yes. In fact, they would lay dead people on the ground in poses with flowers or other resources. This is how we know that they cared for each other. Did they have jobs? I guess hunters and gatherers could count, which means to hunt for food and gather edible plants. They were nomadic, so they would find a good spot for that time of the year and to hunt and gather in. So a wandering kind of lifestyle? Yes. Because they were always moving, low cargo was very necessary. Low cargo means that they had a low amount of material culture. There weren't many different types of tools because you could pick up an old plain old rock and use it for a lot of things. Using one tool for many things really helped keep low cargo. They lived in caves and other natural shelters. Their art was always my favorite. They could paint on anything they wanted to. Their tools, clay, even canvases. The one you're probably more familiar with is cave drawings. Ooh, I've seen some of those on the internet. They're really cool. Did they travel in small or big groups? Smaller bands of about 30 people. Everyone worked, including children. The great part is that everyone was equal because they all had the same goal, survive. Even, they were, even though they were nomads, movement was limited. That's why they would go back to the same good places with lots of resources. Then they would leave to another and come back again. This cycle was based on amount of food and seasons. So did they make their tools better or what happened in the future? Innovation is to take something you already have and make it better. For example, in ancient Egypt, you to get water, you would have to take a bucket, and the flow of the water was very strong, so they made a shadoof. What's that? It's a mechanism that pulls water out easier. This, this invention, which was based off of something, made it easier to live. That's what it means to innovate. So what did the Paleolithic people do? Well, the Paleolithic people is only the first part of prehistory. The Neolithic Revolution is the transformation from Paleo to Neolio. Instead of being nomadic, they would be sedentary. Like rocks? You could think of it like that, but they found this huge field of grass. Then they took the grains and made bread like rock. Ooh, so that's where the rock bread came from. Yes, this is also how hunters and gatherers became herders and farmers. They would live in one place and farm crops and herd animals. Is that where the domestication starts? Yes, for animals and plants. How do you domesticate plants? Domestication means to train or change an animal or plant for the better of human life. Take corn, for example. It used to be very tiny. Over time, people domesticated corn, and now we can eat it like a typewriter. Because it's bigger now? Yes. Is this going to turn out like Egypt, where most resources mean more people can be supported? Yes, it is. It also means that more people means a new economic system. Specialization of labor, which means different people have different jobs. If you're into art, then you would make cave drawings and clay sculptures. If you'd like hunting, or you were strong, you would hunt. The list goes on and on. This also leads to social stratification, which means that if you had a more important job, you will see yourself as more important. Ooh, this leads to disagreements and fights. Yes, that's how we have it today as well. Different people have different opinions, or think that they are more important than others. Conflict is the number one problem with people, and all because we simply can't agree with each other. Well, now that I know so much, we can make a bow now. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, you make the bow and I'll make the arrow. Got it. What do I need? Well, the stick looks good, but it's not bendy. Ooh, this one must have got dampened by water. It's bendy enough for one shot. Now, for the string. Let's see. Hmm. Hey, this looks like someone left some by accident. It's made out of, of bundle pieces of twine. This will work. I'll just unravel the ends and tie it to them to the wood. Okay. Stick, stone, and a feather. 
quack. Good thing none of the people are vegan. All paleo people are omnivores. Hey, Julia, got any extra twine? Yeah, some loose ends. Perfect. I'll use the sharp stone edge to insert a hole. Then I'll just use the then I'll just put the string to tie it around my rock. I think the rock should be sharper. Yeah, you're right. I'll sharpen it with another rock. Then tie it to the stick. Duck feather for the end and done. Me too. Quick, use your last common sense card. Here, take the arrow. Be ready to teleport in three, two, one. Shoot. Ah! I, I think we're home. Oh gosh, oh gosh, never again. Yes, no, never again. Never want to do this. No, 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 no. Uh, Julia? This. Anything with this. Nothing. You know no, that no, you no, need no, to no, do no, this no, next no. year, right? <laughs> the end. To be continued. Bye. Nom, nom, nom. Julia.